Welcome back to the Virtual Antics Podcast. I am so excited today because I have Nancy Erickson on our show, and she's also known as the book professor. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Natalie. I am so happy that you're here. And I can see on your wall, you have so many books. That- no. Well, that's what happens when you publish books. Every time we release a book, I treat myself to a little metal print of the cover. And so over time, my office walls are just all books cover. So I love it. That is amazing. So tell us a little bit more about what you do. Yeah. So I am an international book coach. I help people, I would say who aren't writers to become authors of high impact nonfiction books. And those are books that will either save lives, change lives, or transform society. So I actually own two book related businesses. One is the book professor where we help you write your book. And then I own a nonfiction publishing house, Stonebrook Publishing. And we publish our clients' books at Stonebrook. We also publish a lot of other authors' nonfiction books as well. So That's awesome. So that's cool. it. There's a big old backstory, but that's it in a nutshell. Well, what's the backstory behind it? I'd love to hear more. Well, it's kind of, people often ask me, how'd you get into this? And my answer is sideways. So my, actually, my original career was in high tech, with, and I was a systems engineer for IBM and worked for Oracle Corporations. And in 2006, my father was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor. And so we knew he would only live about seven months. And so I quit everything and went down. My folks were living in Florida. I went down there to be with him until he passed away and a little bit longer to stay with my mom for a while. And and then I came home and I was like, oh, I quit my job. You know, what do I want to do? And I had always wanted to write. And so I thought, well, I think I'll hone those skills a little bit. And anyway, I ended up going back to school to get a master's degree in writing. And when I graduated from, you know, with my degree, the university where I had studied asked me to join the faculty and teach. And at the same time, I started Stonebrook Publishing, which is the publishing house, the nonfiction publishing house. And we had a couple of really incredible, I'd say, hits right out the shoot. So the first book we published was written by a Holocaust survivor who'd gone to school with Anne Frank. And we ended up doing the book release in Amsterdam at their school. It was oh, that's so cool. It was so cool. I was like, pinch myself. What am I doing in Amsterdam? You know? And then the next book we published, we got back cover endorsements from Sir Paul McCartney and Cindy Crawford. And I was like, I was just thrilled to death. But there was a problem. And that was that we were getting a lot of manuscripts submitted that had a seed of what we were looking for, something that would really change lives or save lives or transform society. But they were so poorly written that we couldn't do anything with them. And I thought, you know, this isn't, this really bothers me, you know, because the whole reason I was doing this is because I think we've got so many problems in our world. And I really believe the answers are trapped inside of people. And that when you simply tell your story or what you've been through or overcome or what you've developed or what you've invented or whatever, then you become the source of two things that people can't live without. And those two things are hope and help. So these manuscripts had a seed of that in it, but we were turning people away. And I'm like, this isn't right, you know? So I took a step back and took a year and I wrote this step by step by step by step by step process so that people who aren't writers can actually become authors and of really, really good books. That's amazing. And that's so important. I've met with a few publishers before, and I really love that you're taking the, the writer's story and really trying to transport, transform people's lives because talk with publishers, especially in your space where they don't believe the story, they're like, the story doesn't really matter. And I'm like, that's what always hooks me is the person's story whenever yeah. I read their book. And how they got from point A to point B and everything in between. And so I really love that you're focusing on entrepreneur stories. Now, do you have any like success stories? Oh, we have a lot of success stories, but I do want to tell tell you one one other thing first is that there's more to it than that, than the book, because of the way that we construct your book, when you're finished, you should be able to take every chapter out of it and repurpose that material for other revenue producing products such as you know keynotes or if you do seminars or workshops a lot of online stuff we've helped authors launch a lot of their online businesses so that they you know especially with your audience you we live in a great time right now that 
you can be everywhere all at once, you know, without leaving your home. And we have a lot of good tools and, and such with technology that we can do that and still really serve our audience and help them out. So one of them, and you asked about success stories, one book that we released, I guess it was about a year ago, is called What Lurks in the Wood. Actually, it's right back here. And you see the, all the seals are a lot of our books win awards. That's, you know, really, we're proud of that. But this book was written by a woman who, she's a mom. She was, she's really an MIT brainiac. She's so in into this technology space and such. But anyway, her husband, who was also wicked smart, started showing signs of memory loss and it was really weird. And so anyway, long story short, they said he had early Alzheimer's, but she didn't believe it. She kept digging and digging and digging and digging. And he, he kept declining and declining and declining and declining. Anyway, it ended up that the root of his decline was Lyme disease, not Alzheimer's. And if he had had a treatment at the beginning, it would have just gone away. He died about a year ago. And so I love what she's done. Remember, I talked about repurposing and, and making this your platform. So she's been a leading voice in, in the, she's actually started a startup company to develop testing for tick-borne illnesses and stuff. But she's been on the Today Show and on in USA Today and all kinds of stuff. So I'm really proud of Nicole. Nicole Bell is her name. That's amazing. And you know, I teach courses and funnels and I own a marketing yeah. and when you were saying you could repurpose it, I'm like, you could do blog content. You can turn exactly. some of that reels. You could do course There's creation, your summits, anything. Yeah. Everything, everything. And it all starts with this foundational piece, Natalie, which is the book, because the process we take you through, it's very logical. And I know your clients are really busy. They've got a lot going on at home and with work and such, but it's chunked in a way that you can actually get it finished. And mm -hmm. we want people, we don't want, we don't want starters. We want finishers, right? And we help you to develop it in a way that all the material can be repurposed. Wow. That's amazing. And I think that's definitely helpful is to have that um, second, you know, like the accountability portion of it, because oh, yeah. especially as a mompreneur myself, I have, you know, two kids, five and six years old. And then I got two businesses and then I have a husband in law enforcement. And so we're busy, right? So yeah, I there's no time. Yeah. And the thing, the accountability piece is so beautiful because what we do is uh, we write our books in mastermind groups of like five to seven people. And so every week you log in on your own time to our client portal, watch the, the video training, do the homework, and then for an hour, once a week, we're on a call, like the Zoom call with the whole cohort. And we're talking about what we've done, what, what we've done that week. And people are often like, you have no idea. I do that homework the night before I said, oh, yes, I do. But you do it, you know, and you get further down the road. And so it's so great to work in groups. It gives you not only accountability, but it gives you a lot of confidence. When your book is finished and it's released, it's really vulnerable. And you'll know because you've worked through this, that people have really affirmed your work and, and even helped you develop it a little bit as you, you know, help people with their ideas. That's awesome. I always say like two of the loneliest things is being an entrepreneur and being a mother. And so I think that's really cool that you have that, you know, the group support, but also you're surrounded with people that kind of have similar goals as you, and that may have gone through not necessarily the same things as you, but maybe a similar journey where they can actually relate to you. So to have a group where you can find that connection is super, super important. I know I'm always trying to surround myself with people kind of doing the same things, right? The same goals as me, because that's, I always say your network is your net worth, right? So surrounding yourself with like-minded people is super important. And your children a little, especially when they're, you know, not yet like in high school where they're kind of developing their own lives and have their own transportation. It is lonely and you have to be intentional about building a network of support. And when people are supporting each other in the goal of finishing their book, it it's different from anything else. It's just, it's a big project. And it, you'll be so proud when you're finished. It's so much. Fun. And then you have a whole bunch of people that are proud of you too and to celebrate you because you don't have anyone to really celebrate you. So exactly. it's really cool. That's exactly. awesome. I love that. Perfect. All right. And then what else? So like, what, is there anything that my listeners should know? Like, 
if they have an idea, like where do they start? Yeah. All you have to have is an idea to get started. You know, I don't want you to do anything else. I don't want you to think, oh, I'm going to get an outline. Don't do that. We take you through a process. We don't outline. We actually create what I call book maps, which is a visual representation of every chapter. So we start off with this series of foundational questions just to help you crystallize your message. And it's stuff like, you know, why are you even doing this? What's your motivation? Who specifically is your audience? How will they be changed as a result of reading your material? And so there's 12 of these. And we end up distilling those answers down into a purpose statement that says the purpose of this book is to do this particular thing for this specific audience. That helps you to prioritize what's going to be in the book. Anyway, it's such a beautifully stepped out iterative process that a lot of people like the the starting with these questions and mapping everything out because then when they start writing, there's no writer's block because you've got everything before you. You have a map for every chapter that says every story you're going to tell, every object lesson, every point you're going to make, every quote you're going to include. It's all right there. And then you're just in execution mode. That is so cool. And I think having that, you know, I always talk about goals and guidelines and having, we actually had on our last episode, they, we had someone speak about vision boards. She's like, I don't like vision boards. I like action boards. They're attainable goals that you can, you know, really do. And it keeps you on focus on, you know, on point. And they're just really important that you know what the next step is and you provide that framework super easy. So that way they don't have to kind of guess and figure it out. Like we pretty much do in business. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. And so the books, people that we work with, we work with a lot of people who are obviously what I call solopreneurs and The book is meant to do, it should do three things for you. It should establish you as an expert. It should increase your credibility and it should help attract a following, but it's only going to do that if it's really well done. And so when you work with professionals like us, we take you through the whole process and we have a couple of different kinds of of books. And some of them, a lot of them are business books that are meant to attract people to you for your business. But there's another whole category of books that we concentrate on and I call those over comer books. It's people who have been through something that has had a fair amount of trauma or difficulty and they come out on the other side and they just want to reach back and help others who are in the same situation because when they were there, they didn't find any help. So they want to be that source of hope and help for other people. And we have done tons of those books as well. So even if you don't have anything you want to write about your business, you may have be pretty darn proud of where you are now because of what you've come through. And we can help you with that too. That is amazing. So my story is one of those from the poor kid to the rich kid to the foster kid. Now I'm a CEO. So yeah, so that's actually kind of what I've talked to publishers about is kind of that that story of being labeled as so many things. I was also misdiagnosed with bipolar at the age of 10 because of my transition through foster care. And well, so yeah, of course you're going to be all scattered. Family? I have I have started it like most <laughs> most writers. I kind of just let it fall and put other priorities aside, but you're definitely inspiring me to check out your service. Well, and- I I was not trying to put you on the spot at all, but most people, when they think about writing a book, they know they have something in them, but they just don't know how to get started. And how would you know? You've never done it before. And what we offer you is a real shortcut. I, I totally believe doing things right the first time. I hate redoing stuff or starting stuff and then getting tangled up and just say and forget it. So we we really keep it streamlined and targeted so that you can actually finish your book and, you know, be really proud and helpful to other people because, you know, what good does your story do trapped inside of you? It's it's meant to yeah. be shared and to to help others. Exactly. And I think that's really important is like we have to start putting our story as a priority. And you just heard me say like I keep putting on the back burner. I keep other keep putting other things off, but honestly, getting your story out there in front of, you know, people that's really going to help is going to change your business. And it does something else. Yeah, it does, Nellie. And it does something else too. It helps, it lets you be in charge of your story. You know, it's well thought out and you're able to present it in a way that you experience things. And there's a lot of value in that. It's very cathartic for a lot of our folks. Yeah, it's definitely, I would think, I know when I started writing, I had all sorts of emotions, which is probably why 
why I also went on the back burner because you're relieve, rel- reliving that past. I've actually done like exposure therapy and things like that before. And I can't tell you like how freeing it is when you're, you actually think back on those thoughts that you put into a box and it's like, you're going to let it release, but you're going to do it in this controlled way where yeah. you are going to write it down and it's not going to affect you like it did back then. Right. It doesn't have to keep hurting. Yeah. Yeah. Very therapeutic. Thank you. I am, I'm trying. It's a work in process. Getting it all out there is, is very hard for me. Also because of the medicines I was put on with the misdiagnosis, I have a memory loss of my childhood. So that also is a struggle, (laughs) but I'm working through it. Well, good for you. That's a brave thing to do. And it's a brave thing to write, to, to write a book, any book, whatever you do, you you know, when you jump out there, you're like, you're saying, okay, I'm really ready to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. And so I always think, always think the hardest part about writing a book is making that decision to get started. Yeah. And then I always worry about who's going to read it. But then I got to my thirties and I was like, you know what? It's time for my story to come out because it's never been spoken. And I've never really advocated for myself because I was too young to really know it, advocate for myself. And so I think it comes, you come to the point where yes, it's nerve wracking that your story is going to be out there for anyone to read, but it's really for you that you're doing it. You're putting it out for yourself and it's, it's It's definitely strong. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For you and your listeners, Natalie. So we have these, we're forming cohorts as we speak of writers. And so if anybody's interested, I mean, even if it just piques your interest a little bit, they can go to my website. It's thebookprofessor.com. And across the top navigation, there's a link there that says schedule a call with Nancy. So if this is, if it's, you know, you know, you know what it feels like if you're thinking about doing this. So thebookprofessor.com, I would, I would love to just chat with you about your ideas and see if you're ready to get into one of our cohorts. That's awesome. I hope, and when you guys do write your story with Nancy, make sure you let me know. And so that way I can be one of the first people to get your books. That would be amazing. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nancy, for coming on the show. It's been an honor to have you. I appreciate it, Natalie. Have a good day, guys.